of INCW. Um, I know I said that I would go to the polls uh, before I started the show, so that way we could figure out who was going to be the uh, number one contender for the Prospect Championship. Um, but the issue behind that is, uh, I forgot it's the Elimination Chamber this weekend. Um, and as you know, whenever WWE does like a big match like that, like a Royal Rumble or Survivor Series or something along those lines, I like to do my own version of that match. Um, you know, just to kind of make things different. Um, so what I did is we'll have two Elimination Chamber matches tonight. Um, everyone who was capable of being voted for, uh, for the prospect title will be in that match. Um... As well as two others, I believe. Um, no, one other. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we also have uh, a rematch from Undercard where uh, Victor won via Countout. Uh, so this time we're going to do Extreme Rules with Troy Steele and uh, Victor Sokolov. Um, you can't win via Countout in a no disqualification match. What you can do, however, is uh, take forever outside and never get the victory. So we'll, we'll see where that goes. Uh, we also have, uh, like I said, our Prospect Championship Elimination Chamber match. Um, went ahead and put Insanity in there. Just, you know, had some pretty decent showings. Even in his loss against Kojo, he still did pretty decent. So uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and throw him to the Wolves and see what happens. Uh, there is a special stipulation in this match, specifically for B.J. Worthington. Uh, he will enter number one. He is the first entrant. He won't get in a pod. There won't be any time. He's going to have to wrestle bell to bell if he wants to retain his title. If he manages to go bell to bell and retain his title, he doesn't have to worry about any more wins. I know this should only be like his maybe second or third. Uh, I... I, I been terrible at keeping track of it i don't have my notebook with me at the moment but uh he won't have to do any more victories he can challenge victor at any point after that of course if he gives up the prospect championship uh if he doesn't win then hey he just doesn't win he moves back to the back of the line and that's where we go then we have uh the kid versus ace davis um the kid had a pretty sloppy showing uh last week against gavin sawyer but gavin sawyer has become some next level athlete that i just do not understand how in the actual fuck that's working um so gavin is gonna go ahead and you know be in his uh a league of his own and we'll go ahead and have the kid try again against uh this time ace davis I'm not saying ace davis is a weaker competitor by any stretch of the imagination um it's just i don't i don't know what gavin did in the little month month and a half span between seasons but it, it fucking worked uh i feel like if he got another shot down the road at whoever is the incw heavyweight champion he, he would have zero problems taking that belt off of their waist then we have uh i was having trouble loading the match from last week um i don't remember if these are the two tag teams that were supposed to go head to head but if they are <laughs> then these two tag teams are going head to head this week the winner of this uh of this confrontation of this match will go on to face the uh the Blackwells at a late, uh, to be determined, uh, show later on. Um, this is an extreme rules match, which means there's no tags. There's no disqualifications, no count outs. It's just going to be four guys in there beating the shit out of one another. Um, and then we'll go from there. Uh, and then the final match, um, okay, good. <laughs> the final match is... A women's elimination chamber match for the women's title. Um, I know Betty Blackwell has historically had a rough time in multi-person matches retaining her title. Um, but we'll go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll show you that right now. So we've got Gabby Rich, Diana Fire, uh, Queen Z Zinda, 
Abby Briggs, who probably shouldn't be in here, but, you know, who doesn't want to see a Briggs versus a Blackwell at any point in time? And then the return of Dollface. Uh, I said we didn't have any women coming back from last season, and Dollface is deciding to prove me completely wrong. So that kind of going to be interested to see uh, where, if that rivalry picks back up where it started or uh, or what we're going to have to deal with. She's, she's already looking... That she reminds me of the grudge. <coughs> but yeah, uh, with all that said, we'll go ahead and get this show on the road. Uh, thanks to everyone who's already tuning in. Uh, it's going to be a pretty decent show, I hope. So we'll, we'll just we'll see where things go. But yeah, um, of course, first up. Uh, I think everyone except for one person who wanted to see Kojo return last week. <laughs> That's another thing. Kojo's return, uh, is, it will not be for not. Um, he, uh, he's just not on the card today. I didn't have a place for him today. But it's it's fine. Look, that's what undercards for, right? If I don't have a place for him on Sunday, uh, I got a place for him on undercard on Thursday on YouTube. And if you go to YouTube and you tell your friends and they go subscribe, suddenly it'll be a lot easier to find our YouTube channel. This little rivalry we got going right here. Um, well, oh. Another thing, this is a non-title matchup. Uh, I know usually there's a graphic that says it's a title. It, it's a non-title matchup. Um, Troy Steele <coughs> on undercard wanted to face Victor Sokolov. Um, he lost by countout. He was doing very pretty well, uh, but he ended up losing by countout. And uh, I just don't appreciate that. We had people calling for cage matches, but what you don't understand is cage match can be won just as simply as a as you can have a no uh, or have a count out somebody just climb out of the cage feet hit hit the floor you're good to go you win the match you didn't even have to fight um yes the the info warrior was screwed last week um but we'll see if uh we'll see if he can remedy that this week against our uh heavyweight champion Victor Sokolov Info Warriors for Oh shit. What the hell is this? Info Warriors should probably turn around. No. Oh wow. Victor is stepping it up a notch in the aggressive uh, or in the aggression department. Starting to attack him from behind, but Info Warrior with the uh, what's it called? The Uranagi slam. There we go. Little, uh, little caught off guard by uh, Info Warrior getting jumped from behind. Beating the shit out of Victor though. Victor went for that double sledge. <laughs> Info Warrior going to work. Victor now returning the the combo punches. Ooh, chop from Info Warrior, chop from Victor. Victor went for the the palm thrust to the gut. This match may end up getting thrown out because it never got the start. Yeah, it looks like the ref's gonna hopefully move this to the ring now. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes they throw the match out. <laughs> Gut wrench suplex by Info Warrior. Info Warrior is oh, the repeated punches to the gut. <laughs> Info Warrior is uh having a hard time. He had the upper hand there for a minute, and it's just going away very slowly. Jesus. Victor with the pump handle fall away slam. They have been on the, technically the ramp. They have been in the aisle the entire fucking time. Chops and jabs. Both men just back and forth action. Can we get this down at ringside at least so some people have a better view? Or, uh, I don't know, weapons? 
chops and punches and bunches. Info Warrior tosses uh, Victor into the ring and starts to work on the arm. Victor with the fireman's carry takeover, trying to get some type of space, get control back, and son, oh my god, can't read chat and say this at the same time. <laughs> Info Warrior back at it again. <laughs> Info Warrior may be the resistance we need. Some people may have been overlooking this, but this is technically, look at the kicks to the kidneys, then to the chin. Info Warrior, uh, like he's standing up for America right now. Victor comes over here, the Siberian psychopath, and is just trying to full on rep Russia and take our gold. Maybe Info Warrior was onto something that none of us really saw. I, I don't. I don't know. Went for a chop, but had to work some kicks out of his shoulder. Victor going to the outside. What kind of toy will he grab today? Us fucking sledgehammer. Of course. Oh, Info Warrior narrowly stepped out of the way. Just big right hands. Gonna, gonna work on the arm a little bit more. If he doesn't, if he doesn't have that arm, he's not gonna be able to successfully get off some of the power moves. That uh, oh no, this could be the dominator. Mm. One, two, no, Info Warrior out at two. Going back to the hammer. Oh! Right into the forehead. What the hell? That might be it. There's no rope break. One. No! Info Warrior out at one. The hammer may have rung his bell, but he is not done yet. Victor picking him up by the ears. Slamming him back to the mat. Kick to the face. Oh! And then a knee. The concussions are real. Now choking the shit out of Info Warrior. That 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 looks kind of low. One, two, no. Info Warrior finally powers out. Okay, from the midsection, a clubbing blow to the back. Info Warrior wisely rolling outside. He landed on that hammer. He may want to consider picking it up. Ooh. Big right hand. Going for the ankle lock. Made famous by Kurt Angle. Maybe someone before him, but Kurt Angle's the one I remember doing it. Ripping and tearing, trying to just break the foot, break the ankle of uh, the Siberian psychopath. What's he got in mind? Vicious power bomb. I don't want to, it wasn't a sit out power bomb, but it was effective as hell. Chops and punches. Followed up with an arm bar and a big, or a, a forearm in a big right hand. Victor going for a vertical. Oh, Info Warrior fights out of it with the knee. Hits him with the chops and the punches again. And then the dragon screw. Info Warrior is working over the INCW heavyweight champion right now. Got him in another ankle lock. Isn't going to be able to make him submit outside, but he could break his leg and take that entire vertical base away from the much larger opponent. Victor's tapping right now, and it means nothing. Info Warrior doing him a favor by letting him go. Is he going for another power bomb on the outside? Yes! Jesus! Info Warrior working the leg. 
basically just trying to expose Victor. Victor with a back body drop. Had enough. And snake eyes. Onto the ring apron. Good lord. Info Warrior collecting himself rather quick. Got Victor back in the ring. Throws him back on the other side. You got to think, he's he's had to have worn down the Siberian psychopath enough at this point where he can take him back inside the ring and get the win. The chops and the punches. And then the dragon screw. Those short little left jabs, they don't do a lot of damage by themselves, but there's like two or three of them coming behind every chop. One, two, yep. Chop, one, two, chop. Well, chop, one, two, chop. That is going to be the answer to Victor from what it looks like at this point. Ooh, and a short DDT. What the hell? Did he just punch him directly in the nuts? And how did Victor recover so quickly? Ladies and gentlemen, or mostly gentlemen, this is our first match of the night. One, two, no. I didn't even see what put him in that issue, put him in that predic predicament, but uh, it, was, it wasn't worth a three. Oh, and a stunner! One, two, three! Info Warrior got the win with the stunner! Oh my god! Not only did he end his losing streak, he ended his losing streak against the man who effectively started it all. The monster. <laughs> Info Warrior with the fucking stunner. Out of nowhere, I might add. I didn't see a stunner coming at that particular moment. I'm definitely going to be interested to see where he uh, where he progresses from here. That is a hell of a win. That's 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 a good way to start some momentum right there. All right, and now on to our first of two elimination chamber matches. You have former prospect champions in voodoo and death who still have a bit of beef with one another uh outside of the whole title picture you have mvp the man who's always at the dance but never really succeeds uh once he's made it that far you have viking who has been perpetually in the same place since winning over neil bochamp uh in their best of seven series i believe it was um you have our current champion uh, B.J. Worthington, and then you have uh, the newest of the newcomers in this match, uh, Insanity. Um, he, he's got, he is one and one right now. Um, Insanity, however, is, uh, his loss that he has was against the returning Kojo. So, sure, it's still a loss, but the fact he held his own as well as he did against Kojo um votes f it it, it, it kind of won my vote to be in this match i'm not even going to say who i want to win this match because first of all i feel like everybody already thinks i feel like everybody already thinks they know who i want to win uh also if you weren't here for the very beginning of the stream there's a special stipulation in this match bj worthington will enter as number one 
if BJ Worthington manages to last bell to bell and come out of here still the prospect champion, however many wins he needed to get to cash in uh, or to have the option to cash in, those are all gone. This one counts for all three. If if we ever have a match of this caliber for the prospect title, it will always count for all three vic uh, all three wins as long as you're the first one out there. So like if there's like a uh, an elimination chamber or like a Royal Rumble type uh, setting uh, for the prospect championship, if you're the champion, you have to be number one. And you have to last bell to bell to be able to cash in. I mean, there's a lot of victories going on. I, uh, I unfortunately cannot use my own arena. <laughs> so, but anyways. <coughs> first up, we have Insanity coming to the ring. Well, if they pin three people and they win then they're just the prospect champion because you have to you're not the prospect champion until you win this entire match so it only really works if you retain it throughout the entire match because technically the way it works is like let's say BJ gets pinned right out the bat him versus one other person, they pin BJ. That person is not the prospect championship yet, or not the prospect champion yet. The prospect championship is now vacant until otherwise. Can you smell what BJ is cooking? With face paint like that and party favors on his pants, I don't, I don't want anything to do with what he might be cooking. I feel like that dude cooks cyanide and napalm. If I had to be completely honest. Probably eats the shit before he gets down here too. Not much to be said about insanity. Because we've only seen him twice. Uh, one was in a uh, heft. That's another thing. His only win or his win so far was over Info Warrior. Was over Troy Steele. So that's that's a hell of a win in and of itself. Sure, Info Warrior was on a little bit of a losing streak at the time, but the fact remains you have a win over someone who just beat our heavyweight champion. So what does that say? If you become the prospect champion, what happens? Does that mean you're just going to have almost a fast track? <clears throat> Here comes Death, formerly known as Vincent. Finally uh, decided to take the mantle of Death. Uh, became Prospect Champion. Was doing alright until Voodoo made him submit twice. Maybe uh, maybe this structure with all the possibilities of people being able to fly and dive and the fact that there's more than just a one-on-one -on -one environment, maybe this will work to death's favor slightly. <clears throat> well, uh, something we'll have to wait and see. Just take a little bit, but you know. At what point did he take his mask off? And here he comes. MVP. <clears throat> I don't... I never really know how I feel about this individual. Sometimes he's just on point. Great in the ring. Does 
like decent work. He's not a bad wrestler, but other times it's just like get out of here, bro. <clears throat> Coming down here rocking his holy aviators and his leather jacket. You, you know who he reminds me of potentially a mix uh <laughs> wins MVP going back to selling used cars. He reminds me of a mix between Damian Black, and I'm probably gonna get some heat for that, uh and Fabricio Leatherwood. Uh just on appearance alone. Uh, if you didn't watch last season, Fabricio Leatherwood was part of the faction triple threat. And uh them some motherfuckers, I tell you. Always came down together. It was, it was rough. BJ Worthington, the prospect champion. <laughs> low, low payments. BJ Worthington still not able to get rid of the, uh, the pimples on his face. Champion making his way into the ring. I don't like that there's still an empty pod when he's supposed to be inside said pod. Or when he's not supposed to be in the pod. So we just don't give a fuck about the rules then. What the hell just happened? This is two, this is two years in a row this bullshit's happened. The BJ Sucks have, uh, chants have exploded. <clears throat> so apparently, the first two in the ring... Apparently the first two in the ring are going to be uh, the Viking and uh, Voodoo. That's a uh, that's going to be kind of interesting. What the hell? There's a camera coming out of the grating? That's fucking odd. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, BJ. That's cool. That means, uh... He, he probably won't need a fast track to the title belt. Or to, to uh, Victor. I wouldn't necessarily want a fast track to Victor either. But I expect all of my champions, uh, whether they're supposed to be liked or hated, I expect all my fucking champions to abide by the rules that I set. So, we'll see. You got Voodoo and Death looking to kill each other. As well as, uh, it, there's kind of like a hate triangle going on here. So, Death is pissed off at Voodoo. Because Voodoo done made him tap out twice. Voodoo is pissed off at BJ. Because Voodoo just cannot get a win over BJ to save his life. And then somehow... Now, BJ and Voodoo, or BJ and Death are going to end up being connected in all this nonsense. So. (laughs) 
the BJ is drawing some fucking hate in the chat. If you're not watching the chat, you should be watching the chat. It's uh, twitch.tv slash the I knew project and Viking and Voodoo start us off. Viking with a big scoop slam right out the gate. Not looking to give any leeway to anyone in this match. Ooh! I'm gonna start working on the knee. There's a brace there. Probably should have pulled. Probably should have pulled that knee pad down first, but who 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 am I to know anything about professional wrestling, right? I'm not gonna tell a Viking or a professional animal killer how to uh, how to do their matches. Viking, kind of slow to get to his feet already. Oh, with the arm drag. Knocking Voodoo away. Looks like he's going for maybe some type of a drop kick. And BJ Worthington is number three. Oh, no, he's not. What the fuck? I could have sworn the light stayed on him. Oh, running knee right to insanity. Viking going to depict the bones of the new guy. Sanity not having any other with that dragon screw. And it looks like Voodoo and Insanity in their... No, well, there it goes. I was going to say in their disfigured uh, brotherhood. Going to team up on Viking, but that was incorrect. This is just... Nothing but a chop that oh close on to the back of the head running me again Viking not having any of that sweeps the leg Oh What the hell is that? Is he already tapping? That's ridiculous. No, he's not he's not Insanity fought his way out. BJ has now decided to pick the book. Oh, Insanity flies over Viking to take out BJ. Insanity must be completely... He just wants to get in the good favor of the fans. He hears all the you suck chants for BJ, and he's just going to make sure that BJ does not come out of here champion. That, that would be the mindset I'd be in. Even if you don't win, you'd be over with the fans just for getting rid of that slimy bastard. Voodoo and Viking going to war outside against the cage. BJ with a big close on one. No. Ain't doing a somersault. Who will be our next competitor? Death. Death has entered the fray. Maybe looking to go one on one. Oh no. He's going to help Voodoo and team up on Viking. Voodoo, on the other hand, looking to. Look at Death! Just with the power! My god! Get shit out of the Viking. Voodoo is going to work on BJ. Insanity kind of put a halt to it. Super kicking his up for his troubles. Springboard moonsault missed completely by death. And here comes MVP. All six competitors are finally in the ring. Will they break off in pairs of two, or will they just keep Battle Royale beating shit out of anything in the move? A lot of people seem to be wanting to go after BJ, specifically Insanity at this point. Viking. Viking and Death. Those are, are those are the two biggest motherfuckers in here, so I, I understand completely why they're just going ahead. Insanity with the pin! One, two, three! BJ Worthington is no longer the champion, and while we were counting that, MVP flew off the top of the cell. Son of a bitch. We're gonna have to wait to see a replay for that. What is... Ooh, with the frog splash from death. BJ Worthington leaves the chamber. Insanity move. Ooh, caught with a lariat. 
One, two, three. Insanity has been eliminated by the Viking. He focused too much on MVP or on a uh, BJ Worthington rather, and he paid for it. Voodoo has been eliminated by Death. Death finally got his uh, vengeance on him. Good Lord, I can't tell what the fuck is going on around here anymore. People are dropping like flies. Who, whichever one of these three men comes out of here as the winner is the prospect champion. Oh! Death was going to take out Viking and MVP stopped him. What the hell is this? MVP went for a close line. Death is laser focused on the Viking. Picks him up for a vertical into a pile driver. That might be it. No, what the hell happened? Why did he break it up? Did MVP get in there just in time? Like, what the fuck? MVP and Death are going head to head. Oh, reverse cutter. MVP kicking Viking, bringing him back to life. That was not smart at all. Ooh, running Lariat. Viking sidestepping that super kick. Lufthansa press. Repeated hammer fist to the head. He could be looking to finish off death right here. What the hell is this? Oh, sit out last ride power bomb. MVP going for the pin. One, two, no. Death out at two. What's Viking going for here? It's gonna probably miss since MVP got involved again. Death and MVP. Just going at ooh, knees to the midsection. Viking wants death. Death caught Viking. What the hell is this? Pump handle Olympic slam. One, two, no, Viking out in two. Death with the some type of fucking claw. Viking didn't submit. MVP going for a clothesline. Death with the F5. One, two, no. MVP kicks out at two. This could be it right here. Oh, MVP reversed. Viking in. Oh, with the Death Valley driver. Rolls through. Back to back. Death with the pin. One, two, three. It's down to Death and Viking. Death with the Hurricane Runner. Oh, Viking blocked. Viking with the Luthers press. Punching death in the face again. Going for the pin. One. No, just a one count. Viking's got to be thinking what's he got to do to put him away. Death has Viking in the electric chair. Oh, and a face buster. Viking kicks death away. This has become a hell of a match. What's death set up for here? Oh. Bomb. One, two, no, Viking out of two. After a hell of a power bomb, going for a gut wrench power bomb now. Deadlift sit out power bomb. I'm sorry, so many different power bombs in one match. Knees to the face. Looked like he may have wanted to go for a cocky pin right there. Didn't quite get it. And then Vikings sloppily to the outside.
this might be it right here. Sends it back inside. I don't know what the purpose of all that was. This could be Vikings moment. This could be his moment or this could be his demise. Oh, with the running knee. Death fights back. Gets the elbow. Oh, and a running knee of his own. Death said this is going to be it. Stomping the hell out of Vikings' knees. Knees and ankles. Multiple elbow drops directly to the knee. He's got him up. Oh, and an F5. Death going for the pin. One. Two, three. Death is once again your prospect champion. Holy shit. Mm, that tombstone or that pile driver. That could have been it right there if he would have went for a pin. I understand why he didn't. MVP was looking like he was ready to break up a pin, so. And <laughs> tries to steal one. Holy shit. And Death is your new prospect champion. Man, that was a hell of a match. Realistically, Death had the most eliminations, or it may have been tied for eliminate. No, he may have had the most eliminations in that match. I'm not 100% sure. No, he was tied with, uh, tied with Viking. I think. I don't know, man. It was a hell of a match. That's what's important. Now we have Ace Davis versus The Kid in an Extreme Rules match. Neither one of these two uh, favor Extreme Rules matches. <laughs> um, neither one of these two right here have much experience, if any experience at all, in the, uh, in the department of uh, Extreme Rules matches. Um, they may have both been in one, but like actual experience where this is what you do, it's, it's not for them. But here in, uh, here in INCW, I like to have extreme rules matches a lot. It, uh, it builds character. It builds character. It cuts people to shit. Here comes the key. What I may start doing, uh, I may just start having like MMA, like UFC style matches where you can only win by submission or knockout. And, uh... It's in a cage. We'll, we'll have to see. Ace Davis is a seasoned vet. Um, not sure if he has this in the bag, though. I'm not going to sell the kid short just because he, uh, he didn't have much of a showing season two or this season so far. You're right. We do need Randy Razor to come back. If only he would ever pick up the phone. BJ was the fourth one in and the first one out. That is fitting for his entire career. The 
back in the INCW arena. Well, the second INCW arena. Here comes Ace Davis. A lot of people didn't like him season one. I'm guessing a, a, a lot of season... A, a lot of people don't like him season two. I don't know. Or season two was his first season. race cars to focus on wrestling I mean if that's the case he shouldn't have come back then once again uh, cuz I've noticed that uh, a lot I get followers on PlayStation after I go off air or while I'm streaming if you really want to support the show go subscribe to our YouTube channel at the I new project on YouTube or go to twitch.tv slash the I project and follow us on twi uh, Twitch. Oh, what the flapjack? That's not a very MMA move at all. The kick is, but it got caught. And a dragon screw. The kid likes to consider himself a kickboxer, but you, know, you also have to understand. Ooh, the stroke. You also have to understand you have to, you got to do what you got to do uh, to win these matches. And pandering to the crowd will not get it done. I thought he was going for something. Ace Davis with the headlock and the elbows to the top of the head. Ace Davis going up top already. Ooh! Little too early for that. The kid is was well aware of what was about to happen and got his knees up just in time. Changing just appendage stomps is what they're doing. Got the arm lock. Ooh, in the twist. Ooh, with the springboard corkscrew, whatever the fuck that was, but it, it, it looked good. Oh, look at the athleticism of Ace Davis. Holy shit. Who would have thought, like, how do you get out of a counter? Like, you know what, I'm not even going to question these things anymore. <laughs> the kid going to what he knows, going to a submission hold, trying to break the knee. Well, not break the knee, but hyper extend the knee, as some people would say. Twisting through. Ooh, Ace Davis showing off, doing the push-ups. And ooh, close line to the outside from the kid. The kid going up top himself. Ooh, went for an, a standing elbow drop. Those are never wise. Those are never a good idea. Ace Davis going to the top. We're just going to exchange high fly moves at this point. Elbow drop to the back of the kid. Goes for the pin. One. No. Ooh, kick to the back. It looks like it only fired the kid up. Went for a Superman punch. Got caught. Ooh, a standing splash. That's usually used by larger opponents, so it'll do more damage, but, uh, you know. To each his own, I suppose. Got an arm ringer. Go for the pin. One. No. Drop kick to the back of the head. Doing the push ups again, just being an overall prick. Gotta tell you. And a knee to the back. Davis with that arm lock, trying to rip up on the shoulder. Take a, take a little bit of punt power out of those punches if he keeps doing that. 
And apparently so will an arm breaker. Yeah, leading back suplex by the kid. It's very rare we see actual wrestling moves out of him, but when it happens, it happens. Slamming the arm into the mat. Oh, nice chop and a clothesline. Oh, and another clothesline. Ooh, jumping heel kick. He could be looking to finish the match right here. Oh, with the DDT. Go for the pin, kid. One, two, no. May need to set up for something a little bit bigger than a DDT. Running kick. It's like a thrust kick or a super kick. Two, three. Ace Davis knocked him the fuck out with that super kick out of nowhere. Holy shit. The kid thought he was in victory lane and forgot about the match. Good lord. Alright. Next up we have our number one contender match for the tag team titles. count is there. It's in the there it is that super kick. It's kind of difficult to see what uh what was going on. Like I knew there was a kick, but it just popped up. It just happened. So I don't know how else to uh to discuss how he did what he did, so. All right, on to our tag team match. Uh, go ahead and start letting me know in the comments who you, uh, The, the women aren't until the main event. But go ahead and let me know in the comments or in the chat or whatever. Uh, who, do you, who do you want to win this match? <laughs> he needed medical attention. <laughs> and like it says at the bottom of the screen, this is a, an extreme rules match. So, uh, anything goes. There are no tags. None of that. Apocalypse? Well, there's a couple of weird... There's three weird-looking weird guys. And then there's one normal guy. I swear to you, if these fucking loading screens don't go quicker... Adrian Knight and uh, the Nightmare Kingdom doing pretty decent. I mean, I kind of upset they won off of a count out, but hey, apparently that was just the theme of last week. I don't 
Man, it's just... It's really up in the air who's going to win this. Because both teams, they're... You got the Nightmare Kingdom that's, like, fresh, brand new. But you also have Adrian Knight, who's been champion before. Uh, Apocalypse, everyone... Every one of their members has had title opportunities with only death coming out with anything. Uh, good God. That dude's eyes are completely fucking red. Like, if they say fire when you see the whites of his eyes, you'll never be able to shoot him. There's, there's no whites. Wonder why there's no preference. The the Nightmare Kingdom versus uh, the Nightmare Kingdom versus the Blackwells for the first time ever would be impressive. It also works out because the Nightmare Kingdom have a uh, a queen who will also be in the Elimination Chamber match next. Well, after this match, of course. Next makes it sounds like after the entrances, we're going to have an Elimination Chamber match with none of these people involved. That's terrible phrasing on my part. All four members in the ring, and here we go. Adrian wisely running around, getting on the other side of the ref. Dirty tactics already at play. Pestilence caught a hold of him. <laughs> we got Adrian Knight and Pestilence fighting it in the corner. Oh, nice kick. We got Famine and Mr. Nightmare and the other. Famine rolls to the outside. Grabs a hold of a... Uh... Ooh! Slams Mr. Nightmare's head into the apron while Pestilence just goes to work on the knees. Not even a one count. Stomp to the lower back. Oh! Somehow... Pulls up his mask just enough to start biting the shit out of the fingers. Dang, clothesline by Adrian Knight. Adrian Knight's gonna go look for some toys. Mr. Nightmare is on the other side, handling the hell out of a famine with a oh, just double face drops. Oh, step up in Zaguri by Pestilence. But double face drops on the outside by Mr. Nightmare. Is he going to go for another one? No. Finally going to go for some kicks. Famine was ready. Adrian went for a... Uh, looked like a clothesline. Got caught with a pump handle neck breaker. Across the knee. Oh! Pestilence. Oh, busting the kneecaps again. Hammond looking to maybe take Mr. Nightmare back in the ring. No, we're just going to keep this separated. Pestilence feasting again on the hands of Adrian Knight. Adrian Knight's going to know what it's like to be a champion, he's going to know what it's like to earn a championship, but he's not going to know what it's like to necessarily be in a tag team, unless they've done some stuff that I don't know about. Pump and neck breaker from Pestilence again. It seems one half of each team is just doing fairly well against the other opponent. Mr. Nightmare is destroying Famine, while Pestilence is eating literally eating Adrian Knight alive. What could he be setting up for here? Oh! Pest 
pestilence with the chicken wing. Will Adrian submit? No, he fights his way out of it. Elbow to the face. We could have been looking at number one new. We could have finally crowned Apocalypse as the number one contenders right there. Famine looking for a, a toy of his own. Belly to belly suplex by Adrian Knight. Famine gets the ladder. I don't know what the fuck he's got planned for that. Just hit him with it. That's what he got planned. Adrian Knight going up to the top rope. Famine with the octopus stretch. Cannot get the win out there. Pestilence with the elbow and the ends of Gurry. Super kick by Mr. Nightman. Pestilence once again biting the fingers of Adrian Knight. Famine with a roll up outside, but you can't get the pin out there. Dragon suplex on the ladder. How it, how, why? No, you, you just leave Mr. Nightmare alone. He's dead. You get back in there and you help Pestilence, who's uh, finally tasting the fury of, of Adrian Knight. Ooh, Adrian Knight and Pestilence with a kick one another in the face. Both had the same idea. What the fuck is this? Not again. Not again. Adrian Knight. Oh, superplex to the outside. Meanwhile, Famine has Mr. Nightmare locked in a submission. Adrian Knight needs to get it. No, Mr. Nightmare broke loose. Oh, miscommunication. The spinning heel kick. Miscommunication took out Adrian Knight. Everyone is laid out except for Mr. Nightmare and Pestilence. Famine back to his feet. Apocalypse trading blows on Mr. Nightmare now. Ooh! Famine working the arm. Adrian Knight back to his feet. Nightmare. All four men back in the ring. Pestilence. Oh! Pestilence drop kick gets Adrian Knight off of Famine. Going for a package pile driver here. Oh! Right in the not in the center of the ring, but in good enough position. Go for the pin. One. Two, no, Adrian Knight kicks out at two. Famine follows up, one, no. Pestilence thought they had it one. I don't know why in the hell he would think that. Going after the arm of Adrian Knight again. Meanwhile, Mr. Nightmare is working over Famine. Adrian Knight rolls through with the DDT. Nightmare with the kicks. More miscommunication. It's Mr. Nightmare got kicked in the skull by Adrian Knight. Adrian setting up for the super kick. No, rolls through. Goes for the pin. Probably should have pinned him off the roll. Of one, two, three. Famine was two days to get in there and do anything about it. All he had to do was reach a hand in and he could have broke it up. Oh, to the knees, to the face. And there's the chicken wing. Adrian Knight fought out of that fairly quickly. It was a slow match. Took a little while to get everything started. And that shit right there. The superplex to the outside. The Nightmare Kingdom have the Blackwells in their sights. Will they be able to do what no other team has done? The only people to ever take the titles off of the Blackwells was PWA. And that's because they had to do blackmail. They had to politically get the titles off of them.
What? Anyways. <clears throat> and now we have all these women. Diana Fire, Abby Briggs, Betty Blackwell, the return of Dollface, the Queen, and Gabby Rich. All competing for the INCW women's title. Why in the fuck did you just ask if I grabbed your ass? We're not even... What? I can see that I'm going to have to just stop having any type of chat in the uh, on the streams. I don't... That just... That just fucking completely distracted me from everything. But anyways... Fucking dumb. I doubt that. Anyways. <laughs> yep, and the chat starts. Stupid fucking chance. Hecklers, every one of them. Kill them all. Well, there, no one can grab any male's ass in this match because there's all females. Once the loading screen gets done, I'll actually be able to call entrances in a match. Uh, as far as this match is concerned, it doesn't have the same stipulations as like the prospect title because there's not, you can't cash in the women's title for anything. Um, so. I don't know who's going to be first. Clearly, I didn't know who's going to be first in uh in in the men's elimination chamber, but you know, it's it is what it is. Uh I tried to know. I set up a stipulation, they didn't listen to it. So, for the women's, there are no stipulations. What the fuck is this? Oh. Diana Fire. I forget that you can't have a... Uh... Oh, what the fuck's it called? You can't have your own arena for these, so... Diana Fire having two successful victories over Abby Briggs, who is also in this match. You're right. <laughs> Betty does not have a great record in uh, multi-women matches. I was kind of going over that a little bit earlier. Um, I didn't plan on putting her in a multi-women match, but being that Victor defended his title last week and the nonsense that needed to be handled with him and Info Warrior, this is the only other Elimination Chamber title I could put on the line. So Betty Blackwell will start in a cave or in a pod that is great for her and terrible for everyone else involved rumor has it that uh what betty drinks when she comes to the ring is uh, a liquid familiar to anyone who is in our age bracket, or my age bracket, uh, it's called The Stuff. Uh, turns out it, uh, it has magical properties that just make you really fucking good at basketball to where you can beat uh, aliens, and apparently it makes you really fucking good at professional wrestling where you can retain the title forever. So, um, I don't know if we're going to be able to market that. I don't know if The Stuff is FDA approved, but neither is Moonroids. And we let that run rampant. Maybe maybe all the Blackwells are on the stuff. Die in the fire. Keeping an eye on Betty Blackwell. Who the fuck is this? Dollface. Dollface limping out to the ring. She is mighty. The camera is not. The camera is not. I don't know. Moonroids. 
No, the, the stuff is not roids. It's the stuff. It's the Space Jam reference, man. Come on. Dollface, I see, got rid of her demon cloak. Gonna go get in her cell. Dollface and Betty have had a storied past. Um... Yes, Dollface is short. Here comes Gabby Rich. Uh, you'll see her occasionally on INCW Undercard. You know, she's a uh, she's not super popular, but you know, she's a competitor. That that's that's all there is. She's a competitor. She's had a couple victories um, in the past. Haven't seen her in a while. Uh, she may have a victory over uh, Diana Fire. Not 100% sure on that one. So we've got two women left to come out. The Queen and Abby Briggs. Here comes the Queen rocking her crown. The Queen of the Nightmare Kingdom. Even donning the exact same colors as her uh, faction mates. The Queen's been on a fucking roll hit as of late. Uh, I don't I don't think she's ever went toe to toe with Betty Blackwell, but I mean, the role that she's on, she she might be good to go. Uh, that is not Jolene. The Queen has been around longer than I knew that there needed to be a character for Jolene. And the Queen's opponent starting the match off with her. Abby Briggs. Abby Briggs, also on the Moonroids, still managed to not be as big as fucking uh, Betty Blackwell. Look at the fucking veins coming out of her arms. Oh my god. Got her, uh, got her overall shorts on. I don't know what the fuck you call those. Uh, hello to everyone who's just now tuning in. Um, if you're just if you're just now showing up, clearly uh, you've missed most, if not all, of the show. Uh, but you did tune in just in time to catch uh, just in time to catch uh, the main event. <laughs> oh my God. The, the, the chat is going ape shit over Abby Briggs. Abby Briggs, the proprietor. You know what? I'm not even going to say the name of her finisher till I see it happen. Oh! And with moves like that, will not happen. Um, the queen automatically going to work on Abby Briggs. And a face stomp. Abby with the kick to the face. Got her work boots tied tight, ready to get out here like her brothers and kick some ass. Hopefully she accumulates a better win-loss record than her brothers. Her brothers recently dis uh, discovered that they will not be able to challenge for the, ta the tag titles until Blackwell's no longer have them. Sad, sad day for the Briggs family. Is the queen into the corner and a drop kick to the lower back. Big ass chop. Abby 
goes up. Betty is in the match. Oh my god. Betty goes immediately after Abby Briggs. Abby Briggs not scared. The queen is an idiot. Queen Zayana is a fucking moron. One, no. The best thing to do in this match would be to attack Betty Blackwell. Abby Briggs, maybe she's just doing it because she can't. Oh! The Queen! Wisely sliding down, taking out uh, Betty. Abby sends Betty outside. And then gonna go to work on the Queen. Yes, uh, Betty Blackwell is of rare form. And here comes Dollface. Abby Briggs completely blocked Betty. The Queen back to her feet. How is Abby Briggs? Moonroids, that's how. Never mind, I answered my own question. The Queen and Dollface are going head to head. The ref got caught in the crossfire. Abby is laying into the champion. One. Oh, that wasn't a count. That was a kick. There were so many impact sounds going on at the, at the same time, and I'm trying to watch the whole damn match. It's just not working. Abby getting back in the ring. The queen trying to break the arm of Dollface. Oh! With a cutter from Abby Briggs! One! Two! No! Diana Fire holds two victories over Abby. Everyone is going after the returning doll face while Abby. Abby's going after Diana now! What is she waiting on? Went for a forearm. Got kicked in the gut. Oh! Abby was ready for it. Big hit to the face. And a swinging neck breaker. Betty's taking advantage of absolute. What the fuck was that? She just cut her damn back to out of nowhere. How did she do that? Ooh! Abby is trying to exact some revenge on Diana Fire. Airplane spin on the Queen by Dollface. Betty just wants to fight Dollface. That's all she wants at this point. She know. Oh! Full Nelson bomb and an elbow drop. Betty knows that if given the chance, Dollface will take the title off of her in this multi woman format. Diana trying to get a piece of Dollface now. Meanwhile, in the ring, you got Gabby and Abby. That's fucking annoying. I'm not calling that for too long. One. No. Abby with a hurricane runner of her own. Got a headlock. Abby had one on Gabby. I, I did. I should have thought that shit through. Don't want to call that match at all. <laughs> Abby is bait. Queen sending Abby Briggs back into the ring. Ooh! Abby blocks the first. Blocks again. Chop to the Queen. Form to the Queen. Where is Diana Fire going? What is she at playing? Oh my God. She didn't get as much that as she wanted. Could Abby go for it right now? Oh, cut her. Cut her on Gabby. Went for a big slap. Missed completely. Big whiff. Oh, the mist. The poison mist by Dollface. One, two. Oh, no. That mist is all over the face of Diana Fire. Electric chair drop. And he's down. Ref's trying to count. One, two, no. 
The ref could have got there a little bit quicker. We may be looking at uh, Betty losing that belt. Diana, still with all that green shit on her face. Oh, there it goes. It finally got wiped clean. Gabby throws Abby to the outside to deal with Dollface. Dollface is going after Gabby. Ooh! Pop up DDT. Ref counting it. One, two. Ooh! Gabby kicked out at two. Drop kick to the back of the head. Breaking the eyes is Dollface. Cutter! On to Gabby. Betty is staying laid out for a minute. Ref going for a count. One, two, no. Oh, shit. What the fuck was that? It was an odd-ass fucking move by Gabby. One, two, no. Abby kicks out at two. Really wish they quit fighting each other. Somehow, Dollface, I missed it, but Dollface got the pin on Betty Blackwell. As history proves to repeat itself, Betty Blackwell loses the women's title in a uh, in a multi-woman format. Abby going for the multiple clotheslines. What's Abby going for now? Oh, drop kick to the back of the head while uh, Diana's all hung up in the ropes. Abby setting up the queen in the corner, choking her out with a big, nasty work boot. All faces getting chance again. Oh, short clothesline. One, two, no, Abby kicks out at two. I cannot stress enough how much I do not want Gabby and Abby to team fight. Abby moves out of the way. Oh, Dollface going after Gabby now. Dollface sends Gabby to the outside. Diana comes off the top rope, feeds the queen to Abby. Abby hangs the queen out to dry. Gabby is not done. Gabby about to slingshot Dollface into the cage. Diana going to the top rope. Flying elbow drop onto the back of the queen. Oh! Face buster by Diana Fire. One, two, no. The queen is still in it. That metal grating just being driven across the face of Gabby. Oh, into the cage again. Look for a spear. Missed all of it. Doll facing Abby or tearing Gabby up. I guess it's like a pigtail sisterhood. Nope. Just as I spoke, the alliance broke. A lot of rhyming. We'll stop that. Doll face. Some type of Indian death lock on the legs of Abby. Abby fought her way out of it. Oh! Who just submitted? One, two, no! Diana Fire submitted to the queen. We're down to for the final four. Dollface is in the corner. Queen down two, three. The queen has been eliminated by Gabby Rich. We're down to three. Oh, backstabber on Dollface. Gabby goes to take the pin. One, two, three. Why is it down to these two? Why is it down to these two? I don't want to call this match. Woman in purple and woman in overalls. That's where we are right now. I am not saying those names back to back. Oh! Handful of hair by the woman in overalls. And a cutter. That could be it. What is she doing? What is she doing? 
Is this smart? No! 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 Abby with the clam slam from the top rope! One, two, three! Abby Briggs is your new women's champion! <laughs> with a top rope clam slam! Son of a bitch. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't call that move with a straight face. <laughs> Abby Briggs, where her brothers could not take the titles. Oh my god. <laughs> The top rope clam slam. I never thought we would have to see it from the top rope. Her brothers couldn't get the tag titles. But she got the women's title. You gotta know that Betty's gonna want revenge. Betty always gets her revenge. But, uh... So, <laughs> oh my god. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad everyone enjoyed the show, uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it. <laughs> Gabby feels clean. oh no. Anyways, um, don't forget to like and subscribe and follow and all that. Just Google the I Knew Project, click all the links, open them up in different windows or different tabs, whichever one you do. And just do all the cool little things and then share it out to all your friends. You can like it and everything and, and subscribe and whatnot and, and that's cool. Like, uh, that means you did. But then you share it all out to your friends. You tell your friends, hey, do you want to see a woman dive off a top rope and attack another woman with her clam? And they go, uh, yeah. Then boom, clam slam. There's at least three three instances of the clam slam in Abby Rich Abby Briggs's career. My God. But anyways, enough about the clam slam. We have two new champions come out of this. We have a number one contender for the tag titles and Troy Steele. Troy the Info Warrior motherfucking Steele broke his undefeated streak in a definitive, or broke his defeated streak in a definitive stunner a 1776 stunner that's what we're gonna call it on to Victor Sokolov even after he was jumped from behind so God only knows where that story is gonna go God only knows where everything else is gonna go but if you tune in next week you'll know a hell of a lot more than you know now of course um, and also there may be some implica implications on to undercard. So uh, until next time, y'all have a good one.